All right, class. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the French Revolution. Uh, you're going to kind of get some insight, some background on why the French Revolution even happened. You're going to start to uh, see, uh, we're going to paint a picture today of how people were treated in France. You're going to start to see that uh, not everything was really fair, and you're going to kind of start to come to uh, the uh, reasoning that it was bound to happen, and that's just the way that it was really going to have to be. Uh, before I begin, though, does anybody need a handout still? No? All right. Uh, you guys will have homework, so make sure that you guys are paying attention, writing in uh, where the guided notes say that you need to be writing in. Um, since homework's not hard, it's already up in Google Classroom. Uh, you guys are just going to need two paragraphs about one of the paragraphs, just one of the definitions in your own words, uh, and kind of just give your insight on uh, how you feel about it in sense of how it was kind of ran in France and related to France. Second, just I want to hear you guys' opinion on how do you think a lot of the people in the first estate were, would act now in today's day and age. Good? All right. So first, we're just going to talk about the old regime. So what is the old regime? The old regime is a socio-political system in which many different European uh, countries uh, kind of uh, adapted and used to run their nations. This existed during the 18th century. And um, a lot of the times, these European countries, they were ran by monarchs, right? A king, a queen, it didn't really matter. Um, so these monarchs were ran, <laughs> ran with uh, what's called absolutism. Absolutism basically said, I'm the monarch, I'm the king, I'm the queen. You're doing what I say. I make the law, I make the, the rules, it doesn't matter. Um, in the old regime, classes of people were split into three different estates, but two of the estates had privileged people, one sta estate had underprivileged people. Underprivileged people weren't cared about and they paid all the taxes. The privileged people, they were rich, they were fluent, they were happy, they, uh, they weren't hungry, and they were treated well by everybody. Oh, here's just a picture of a uh, French lady entering a sedan chair. A lot of the times, sedan chairs were uh, used by rich and affluent people. Has anybody ever seen Avatar The Last Airbender? Have you? Yeah? So you know how Princess Azula was carried around in a uh, sedan chair through the city, and they even forced the prince to just go like down the street in a sedan chair, right? right? So a lot of the times you'll see that rich people had servants. Uh, you can see one of the servants here, one of the servants there. Uh, getting ready to pick up the chair to walk them wherever they need to go because uh, walking was uh, essentially uh, they were better than walking. <laughs> so society of the old regime. Uh, in France, they were divided into three different estates. So the first estate, the second estate, and the third estate. Here's where you have the high-ranking members of the church and um, obviously they were the privileged class. With France uh, adapting the uh, religion of Catholicism, these people were basically right under God. Um, they could say whatever they wanted uh, and solidify it with it being from God. Uh, here we have the noblemen. These are the people that are appointed by the king, by the queen, to collect taxes, etc. Obviously, they're pretty wealthy too. They own a significant amount of land in France. And third, we have everybody else. So if you're not a high-ranking member of the church, royalty, or a nobleman, you were underprivileged and nobody cared. You paid taxes. Uh, this could mean you were a farmer. This could mean that you were a merchant. You could have been poor, you could have been a peasant. Didn't matter, you were all on the same level. <clears throat> Here's just a breakdown of the three estates. Uh, we got privileges, burdens, uh, what they were exempt from. So first, privileges of the uh, first estate, they collected the tithe uh, at church services. They censored the press, so if it was a bulletin board, if it was a newspaper, 
whatever they wanted you to see, you would see. Whatever they didn't want you to see, you wouldn't even know. Uh, they controlled the education. Um, a lot of the times, people of the first estate and the second estate, uh, those are really the only ones that were able to uh, be educated. Um, if you were born in the third estate, you really didn't have an educational background, which is why you were either poor, selling thing, farmer, etc. Um, a lot of times, people in the first estates, uh, these clergymen, they would keep records, deaths, marriages, um, births, etc., and they uh, they upheld the uh, appointment of Catholicism as the nation's religion. So, no matter what happened um, going on with them, the Catholic the Catholic religion is always going to be number one uh, rule in their eyes. They didn't pay taxes and they were subject to church law rather than civil law. So does anybody know what that would mean for them? No? Basically, under church law, you were, uh, you were given a trial under your peers, the people that you were working with, basically. Not, not the civil peers, not the people, but the people that were also high-ranking clergy. So this meant that a lot of times, there were favors given out and there was no real justice uh, being portrayed in a sense like this. Um, you could do whatever you wanted and get away with, every, with whatever you wanted because at the end of the day, people that are exactly like you are the ones that are giving you your trial. Uh, their obligations were to the needy, the poor, and the sick. This is basically just a call to God or a call from God in the uh, um, Catholic religion or Christianity, fathers of Christ. Um, it's just what they're called to do. That's why they're clergymen. Uh, here you just have, in the second estate, is your nobleman. A lot of times these are the people that collect taxes. These are the people that monopolize military and state appointments. And again, they owned a lot of land. They didn't pay taxes. And all they had to do was support the monarchy and the old regime. In the third estate, you can see there's no privileges. You get to do nothing. You're exempt from nothing. But all of this list is just taxes. You pay every single tax going on in the nation. Um, and that's just how it was. You can kind of start to see why the French Revolution would happen. You can start to see the snowball effect of what was going on at the time. So what is divine right? And why was this so important for monarchs? A lot of the times, the divine right was basically God put this person in charge. And with the nation being Catholic run or run by Catholics, nobody is going to question what God is doing. If you do question what God is doing, it's considered blasphemy. And that could get you killed. It could get you jailed um, as the best possible or option. Uh, so essentially, when I ask what is divine right and what is the monarch allowed to do under divine right, if you give me an answer that is anything but whatever they want, you're basically wrong. <laughs> so what did the king do? Everything. They appointed intendants uh, for them. They appointed the people who collected taxes. These are your noblemen again. They were the judge. They were the law. They made every single law. They controlled the military. Didn't matter. Uh, if you're going to war, the people didn't have a say in it. The military didn't have a say in it. The king says you're going to war, you're going to war. They say the war's over, we quit, you quit. <clears throat> so, economics under the old regime. So, a lot of France's um, land is considered farmland. Uh, there were the, uh, ag the agriculture, the, uh, ac <clears throat> excuse me, the economy in France is essentially primarily ag agriculture. Um, with this, you could see a lot of the peasants, people that were considered peasants, a lot of them were farmers and a lot of them were selling um, in uh, town squares to different uh, people of different estates. So if a, poor, if a farmer has a poor harvest and they're considered a peasant farmer, what do you think that means? Exactly. Poor harvest means that you get no money and it basically means that you can't afford to pay your taxes. You don't pay your taxes, you're jailed, your land is taken, or you're killed. Everyone keeping up so far? Good. 
All right, perfect. So, with all of your poor people in your country paying taxes and um, essentially uh, paying for the entire nation, you're gonna be bankrupt. It's, it's almost uh, inevitable for you to be bankrupt. bankrupt. King Louis lavished money on himself and the residents uh, in which he was close to. Um, same with uh, Queen Marie Antoinette. Both of them were very lavish spenders. They didn't really care what they spent it on as long as it was for themselves and it was usually never for the people or the nation. Um, a lot of times government found uh, its funds were depleted as a result of many different wars of them trying to conquer everything. Uh, you guys will learn uh, tomorrow um, during the lesson, France went through so many wars and a lot of the times their funds were depleted because of the expenses, because of the uh, people that they had to put out on the battlefield, because of the uh, payments that they had to pay to other countries that may have been helping them, whatever. Uh, France uh, began to uh, enter this uh, thing that we would call deficit spending. It is basically a credit card, uh, before a credit card. So you guys know with the credit card, you're paying with money that you actually don't have and you're eventually supposed to pay it back. Well, in this case, in France's case, they weren't paying any money back and they didn't have money to pay it back. So at this time, they're just racking up debt, 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 and uh, taking in the tax revenues from the privileged class that's eventually gonna run out because taxes aren't going to be paid for anymore. Um, that is all we will talk about today. Uh, before we wrap it up, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, good. Uh, if you guys missed anything, um, I will be over here at my desk. Uh, just ask me questions, ask me what you missed, or you could talk amongst yourselves uh, before class and, and get the information that way. All right.